Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Please introduce yourself in the chat and let us know where you're joining us from today. We're so excited to have you here. Going to let folks trickle in. Hello, Atlanta, Texas. Hi, Leanne, Kristen, Jessica, Melody. Hershey. Montreal, Vancouver, BC. I love seeing where everyone is joining us from. Hi, Sarah in Minnesota. Issaquah, Washington. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. All right. I love seeing all the comments trickling in. Hello, everyone. My name is Dina, and I'm here from the Seesaw team. Welcome to the App Smash with Canva session led by these two lovely ladies, Shelly Camille and Lynn Brubaker. Uh, during this session, we really do encourage you to take notes, share insights, and be active while learning. Um, remember that you do get points on the leaderboard for being active during the sessions. On the top right, you will see um, the chat for sharing and connecting. Next to it is the Q&A for asking uh, the presenter specific questions. You can feel free to uh, ask questions anytime and we'll answer them at the end. Uh, there's also a tab li labeled handouts where any session resources will be shared. And if you'd like to close captions, select the CC in the top right corner and choose your preferred language. Stick around till the end to get your PD certificate and uh, for the swag giveaway. So for now, I will pass it over to Shelly and Lynn. Woohoo! Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We cannot wait to um, spend the hour with you and talk about our two favorite tools, which are Canva and, of course, Seesaw. So let's get started. Uh, before we begin, a little bit about ourselves. I um, have been in education for about 24 years with a mostly elementary background. But the past eight years, I've been a technology coach in my district. So I work with teachers K-12 to on incorporating technology into classrooms. Hi, I'm Lynn Brubaker, and I have been in education for 12 years, and I've taught um, primary grades, K-1 and 2. I'm in the same district as Shelly, and we love to collaborate together and bring tools such as Canva and Seesaw to a higher level in the classroom. So since we have different roles, you'll notice in the corner of, you'll notice the different icons. You see the coach's whistle, and then you see the rainbow pencils. So we're coming at this from two different perspectives. One is a coach, one is a teacher. So you'll notice that as we go through the different slides. So our why, why did we decide to present to you today? And what is our why as we approach collaboration with technology in the classroom? Well, the ultimate why is to learn how to foster student engagement with interactive assessments and creative showcases to spotlight student curiosity and academic growth. And the more we can engage students, the higher the student investment in their learning and work products become. So here are some goals that we have that uh, we hope to achieve by the end of the session. We're gonna give you a quick overview of Canva We'll show you how you can create assessments in Canva to then use them in Seesaw. We'll show you how to use Canva and Seesaw for creativity. We'll showcase students using Canva to create animated videos that you then share on Seesaw from the camera roll. And our ultimate goal is to provide you with lots of tutorials, resources, and ideas. We want you to walk away with tons of ideas, but we also want you to know as you're going through this presentation that everything we talk about, we have a tutorial for that, or we have a resource for that. So we want you to just kind of sit back and enjoy, think about, kind of brainstorm, but know that all the resources that we talk about are right here for you. All right, so before we begin, we want to get an idea of where you are with Canva. So we're going to launch a poll, and this is to, for us to get an idea of where you are with Canva. So if you've never heard of Canva, you're number one. Number two, if you've heard of it but maybe not used it a lot, you're, you'd be a number two. Three, if you use it sometimes um, 
or four, you can't imagine living your life without it, your teaching life without it. So um, go ahead and choose one, two, three, or four. Is it, did it, is it working? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Dana, how's it looking? What are we coming across as? So we have 4% are saying, what's Canva? Okay. Great. Uh, 22% are saying, I've heard of it. 52% 50, say they use it sometimes. And 21% say they can't imagine teaching without it. So that's a great range. And honestly, we it doesn't matter where you're at because um, we're going to show you how to kind of, you know, start slow, start with certain aspects of it, and then build on it as the, years go, as the year goes on. But what the most important thing you need to learn about Canva is that Canva for Education is free. We love free. They are amazing. You know, some businesses pay for this. Canva gives us all the things for free. Um, you, there are so many different um, components of Canva that are free for us that aren't for, that other people have to pay for. So not only they, do they give it free for educators, they give it free for students as well. In my district, our whole district is signed up using Google Sign On with uh, Google Single Sign On, so that we can easily access it through our, our Waffle, or you know we connect it through kids K to two have iPads. Um, it's so easy to use and so great. And um, they do a great job of, you know, giving it to us with all the things for free. So um, again, that resource is going to be in your link tree. If you later, if you haven't signed into Canva using your ed account, you want to make sure you're using the education account because that's where you get all the free things. But you can always go back to our link tree to get this link to access this. Um, if it's something you want for your school, you're probably going to want to talk to your tech director. Um, it's it's definitely a possibility, and it's it's so easy. A lot of our teachers, a lot of our students, use so many this tool in so many ways. So we're going to start off with um, digging into Canva for assessments. Oh, what an amazing tool this is! And we are so excited with the assessment um, rollout with. Uh, Seesaw, I believe it was last year, and to combine Canva with assessments is fantastic. So we know as educators that assessments can be pre-assessments, formative assessments, summative assessments, and when we combine Canva with Seesaw, it is going to streamline this process and make it more engaging for kids. So well, let's focus on pre-assessments. Why are pre-assessments important? Why do they matter? Well, pre-assessments identify the understandings and the misconceptions. And how can pre-assessments drive our instruction? We all know our time in the classroom always feels rushed, always feels limited. So these pre-assessments that we can do in real time through Canva and Seesaw, they are going to help us to determine starting points and the points that we need to review or explicitly teach. So here's the coach's rule. You see the, the coach whistle there. Um, when I create these assessments for my teachers, I often use Canva as my background. Um, it's been so much fun because Canva has so many backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I just go to the presentation. You see up at the top, you have a rainbow of choices. I choose presentation for assessments. And um, the assessment I did with Lynn's class was um, we were sorting 2D and 3D shapes. So my background did not have to be busy. So I just chose a plain background in my presentation. However, look at all the choices under recently used. There are so many. If you type in shapes, if you type in numbers, there are so many great educational templates that you can use as your background. Uh, remember, we're then going to be taking this. So what I did was I used the presentation element for my background. And then I went to elements. And that's where I chose, because this is going to be a drag and drop, I chose my two kind of buckets, if you call them that, when you go to sort. And then I, I added my labels there. Um, again, we're going to show you tons of resources. I even have a template filled with the resources that you see below that you're going to have access to. But here are some tips when you're creating a presentation in Canva. You want to use the design and element to create your background. So the design is your background and the elements are those things that um, you kind of want to use as your sort buckets and, and, you know, that are included in your background. Once you have it the way you want it, 
you're downloading it as a JPEG so that all the images will be static. And this is then going to be uploaded to your Seesaw. And then you just lock your background. Now, this is where my favorite part comes in, the manipulatives, the things that the students have to sort in their assessments. So they um, Canva has probably millions of different um, graphics that you can use. So what I do, and again, we have the template here for you, is I create a two by five by two by five inch template. And then I just make copies. And then I just pull from that element part of Canva and then I just start adding my elements one by one. If you see, I have um, shapes because we were talking about we're going to do a 2D, 3D assessment. And then I also did another one with living and non-living animals. The possibilities for this are just endless. Something important that I want to note is, do you see over on the right-hand side here, when you go to download these as PNGs, an important thing, and I've done it, where I've made the mistake plenty of times where I've had to go back you wanna make sure that it's a transparent background. So that's gonna give you that clear background that you can then, when you go to upload your animals or your shapes, you won't have that white in the background. It'll be clear so the kids will be able to ma manipulate the shapes. Here's some quick tips. Remember, the these um, will be the movable parts in Seesaw. Like I said, you're gonna use a custom two by five by two by five inch um, square. When you add the elements to your um, squares, you want to stretch them out to fill in that white space and then make sure you're using a transparent background when you're downloading. So when we're using pre-assessments in the classroom through Seesaw, that gives us a real-time snapshot. So I can look at the snapshot of the pre-assessment to see what my kids remembered in second grade, what they remembered from first grade. And I look at this and I'm so happy, yay, all 21 of my kids uh, remembered the difference between 2D and 3D shapes with 90 to 100% accuracy. That's fantastic. But when I take a closer look at the individual student, I am able to dig a little bit deeper. How many shapes did they miss on the first try? I'm now able to recognize and to know which students require a more explicit and targeted review and which shapes gave them the most difficulty. I can also reassign this formative assessment to see, um, to monitor those improvements after this instruction. All right, now we get to the fun part. Let's learn and dig a little bit deeper into how we can use Canva for creativity. Because not everything has to be assessment, right? We could have yeah. a little fun with something. Absolutely. So think back to where I just showed you how to use the presentation feature on Canva and the elements. That's exactly what we're going to use for this one. But in this case, what we're doing is kind of creating a photo op, uh, photo booth opportunity. When you think about when you go to a wedding or a celebration, a graduation, and you have those photo booths and you have the little props. These are digital props that you can use. So um, I think about the 100th day of school. Elementary teachers always have reasons to celebrate, right? You have the 100th day of school. You have Read Across America, St. Patrick's Day, all kinds of things. Um, what I love about... Um, using Seesaw and Canva together is you can merge these two great features. So um, what I did in the upper hand corner here is I just took a plain black background in my presentation and then I used elements and I added confetti and I added because they have it the happy 100th day of school. So I added that as my background that became my my prop. And then we talk about those elements. We talk about those movable pieces. Well, if I wanted to make the kids old, look older, they had plenty of gray hair, wigs. Um, they had mustaches and glasses, glasses and pearl <laughs> necklaces, all kinds of stuff that the kids can then use and dress themselves up. Um, it's so much fun as a tech coach because I get to see the admin panel of everyone. So I get to see as these are coming in, it's a great community builder. It's a great way to unify the district and see all around when I get to show on social media, all the fun things. And the families love it when they mm -hmm. upload this to Seesaw. They absolutely love it. So it's been so much fun to think of ways that we can use these two tools together for creativity 
and um, to show that kind of, you know, unity within the district. I'll also say, you know, you upload these to Seesaw and then you have all of Seesaw's tools that you can add to level up. They can add their voices. They can add so many different things. I think I'm getting ahead of myself because the next slide I show you examples of what we've seen this year when we've done those things. So I love these. This is a great activity to incorporate perhaps when you're doing guided reading or small groups. This is a great independent activity for kids to work on and keep them engaged while you're working uh, with other students individually or within small groups. And although this is this is don't tell anybody, but we can have fun <laughs> in the classroom sometimes. Um, this is a fun activity, but we can also use it for more academic purposes, yes. too. You can use the same concept and have students dress up as, as lifelong ago. Maybe they were pilgrims on the Mayflower. Maybe they were explorers. They can have a suitcase and include uh, what they would put in their suitcase if they were traveling across the Atlantic as a pilgrim. Maybe you were doing a space theme and they want to put on their um, astronaut apparatus. So these are fun examples and we love that, but we can use the same concept and apply it in a more academic manner as well. Career exploration. Yes. There's so many great ways to use it. And then, like I said, to level up using that, using your voice recorder, using, you know, they can draw. There's so many things that you can do to make learning fun and engaging. Now, Canva <laughs> for animation. We're so excited. So, like I said, I'm a second grade teacher, and every year we do a habitat research project where students can self-select the habitat of their choice. Um, the objective is for students to be able to demonstrate their understanding of a habitat's environment, its wildlife, and plants. So, this year, we kicked it up a notch with uh, Canva, and we have four components to this research project. One is, well, the research, and then the plan, create with Canva, and communicate through Seesaw. So let's start with the research. What I did with my second graders, like I said, is I um, encouraged them to self-select the habitat that most interested them. I gave them a super basic graphic organizer where they could do their research and just jot down notes um, uh, describing the habitat, uh, learning more about what how that habitat is changing, and of course the animals and the plants that can be found in the habitat. This was done in small groups. We used resources such as Brain Pop Junior, Britannica Schools Online, and just reference books from my classroom library as well as our school library. So students worked in the groups, they did their research, they took their notes. Now we move on to more of the independent stages. So the next stage is planning. This graphic organizer, as you can see, has two speech bubbles and that'll make a little bit more sense um, in just a minute. But what students did is they took the role of the narrator um, and they are choosing as their narrator in their project an animal that can be found in their habitat. So they took the information from the research component and they filled in the blanks of this scaffolded uh, graphic organizer. I, from the get-go, I was very clear about the purpose and expectations of this project and I reinforced it as we went along. So on this rubric, it's divided into two sections. The top section is more directed towards the research and the bottom is the creativity and the communication component um, where we used Canva and Seesaw to do that. So you can see I broke down um, the three different rubric point um, categories. And like I said, research at the top and the creativity Canva component at the bottom. So as a coach, I really appreciate how um, Lynn focused on really that research first. And that's really important because when you walk in as a coach, you're not, if, if you don't have a, if the kids aren't focused, that could really create, you know, 
that can create some classroom management nightmares. When you're in <laughs> Canva and there's thousands of sparkly things, I mean, I would go nuts if I didn't have a purpose. But remember, those kids are coming with their graphic organizer, with their speech bubbles. So they're extremely focused on what they're about to do. So I've done this for about eight years. It's really been the last couple of years where I've tried to app smash mm -hmm. those two together. But my advice to both teachers and tech coaches is start slow. You know, this was not a project that we did in September. This was a project for second grade that we did more towards the end of the year. That being said, you have your older kids that can do that way, you know, way sooner. We also kind of eased into this doing projects throughout the year so that by the time we got to this multi, you know, tasking where we have all kinds of things from Canva, they already knew how to do most of it. It was just a matter of putting it all together. So start slow if you need to. You know, we talk about that presentation and that elements. Those are those two. You could do so much with those two pieces of Canva alone. This project now I've been around a while back in the day. This would have been weeks. <laughs> this project took us two one hour sessions. Now, when I came in, they had already done the research, but, you know, we're keeping it real here. It was two one hour sessions. The students did their research and had their expectations ahead of time. So there was a definite focus when I came in. And like I said, for second grade, this was a May project. But in October, I came in and we introduced background and elements to the students. So they were they were very familiar with those. So day one, we focused on the background. They'd find their background. If their habitat was desert, then their background was going to be they were looking up deserts. Then the elements, that's where it got really fun, where they can find, you know, your elements are both animated and static. So you can add those animated because we're creating an animated movie. You can use those animated elements in these projects. And then we talked about timing. And I have a, a screencast, a five minute screencast of how we did all of this about how, because if you saw in Lynn's um, graphic organizer with the two speech bubbles. There were two speech bubbles because there's going to be two two different um, settings or two different slides in this movie. Are you oh, go ahead? No, go ahead. <laughs> so that was day one. Day two is when we added that what we call the razzle dazzle. That's when if you had a camel in the desert, the camel was talking. What was the camel saying? Well, the camel's speech bubble was whatever they had on their graphic organizer. That's where we took that text animation and that text and we actually animated. You'll see there's different ways that you can animate your text in Canva. Mm -hmm. My favorite is the typewriter. It gives it that typewriter kind of feel. And then we were even able to add, we weren't sure we were going to do this, but they were all, they knew how to do it right away. You could add audio. So if you're in the desert, you can have the sound of like, what do they do? Tumbleweed. And if you're Wind, in the, yeah. if you're in the ocean, you hear the waves it's such a way to take it up a notch um, to add that audio to it. And the kids were so invested. Oh my gosh. They oh, were they, so excited. They were so engaged and so serious. And it, <laughs> it was a blast to watch. Um, and, you know, they always take it further than you think they're going to take it. Mm -hmm. Like I have something in my head and I create, I always try to create it as I'm doing it with them. And they always blow me away and do something so much better. Once they have their movie the way they want it and everything's checked, all you do is save it to your camera roll. So think about all the things that you, we just saved it to camera roll and then they were able to upload it to Seesaw and share it with their families and share it with each other. That was a cool part too. Yeah. To watch them share it and be so proud of what they created. So they taught each other they did. about the habitat. Yes. And, you know, we're big believers in not using tech just to use tech, mm -hmm. but to use tech for creative purposes and, and engaging purposes and authentic learning. And this was such a great opportunity to showcase using those two tools. Are you ready to see it? These are so cute. So if you watch the upper left hand corner, just we'll show you a, a finished product, but just look how all the pieces came together. You can see, do you want to do that one again? Sure. You can see the typewriter animation in the speech bubble. You can see the elements of the plants and animals they added. And that adorable little smiling face, so excited. <laughs> All right, here's another one. So 
in that project, you can see an animated movie background. You can see the speech bubbles. Um, and that's straight from that graphic organizer. You can see um, that students practiced their typing skills and just entered the information that they already had prepared on the graphic organizer from their research. Now, what I wanna point out is we all have kids um, that are uh, struggling in different areas and striving to keep up with peers. And my, of all the components of this, I wanted kids to be able to focus on their research and focus on the creativity and communication components of, of Canva and Seesaw. So what I did is I made sure I met with my kids um, in our tier three reading and I met with them and I typed in the information for them. I knew that was gonna be a, a real challenge for them, but to me that wasn't, the typing was not the most important element of this project. So you can scaffold this to the needs of your students. You know them better than anyone else. And so if you present, perhaps you prepare the information for them and they do the creativity component. Maybe they do the research and like I did, I did the typing in and they were able to do everything else. But this is really a project in second grade that all of my kids could do. Just some needed a little bit extra support, but they still met the objectives. There's another one. And then here's one down here. That audio, doesn't it just bring it to life? They were so excited. This was such a win, a win for us as educators to see our kids so invested and a win for our kids and families love to see it communicated through Seesaw. So here are some different ways we've used Canva throughout the last couple of years. Um, and we have these in Linktree as screencasts. So up here in the beginning of the school year, I think this was the end of the school year, they had an open house where the families came to visit and they create their own bio poems, a poem about themselves. And a teacher had contacted me and said, um, can I, what can I do with technology? Like we do the bio poems every year, but how can I like level up using technology? I said, Canva. So what we did was, you know, you talk about that background. Well, that background could be a picture. So once they created their bio poem, they took a picture of it. And if you see one of the most magical things in Canva is that you can just take a picture of something. Say you have a kid in a classroom, the kid's near their locker, what, wherever. Canva automatically takes a background of both a picture and a video of up to 90 seconds. So think about all those opportunities where kids are recording themselves and you don't have to worry about where you're at because you can take that background away. One button. So in this example here, um, the child you know, read her poem, they videotaped it using her iPad, then we uploaded it to Canva and in seconds, like magic, we were able to take that background away. She was in the classroom and now she's in her bio poem. So now we go through that bio poem and then we use that elements feature to add yeah, some of that razzle dazzle. Again, because it's a video, you can add some animated pieces to it as well. Uploading it to Seesaw, saving it to your camera roll, sharing it with families that can't make it that night to open house because you know, we're all busy. So it was a great opportunity to be able to showcase learning both at school and at home. You know, we talk in this lower um, left-hand corner, we live in Lidditz, Pennsylvania in Lancaster County. And um, one of the things the students do is they write a report about a favorite place in Lidditz. So in this case, it was our Lidditz Springs Park, the Duck Park. So we were able to take a picture, make it the background. And then this is a kid's report. He's reading the report. Again, he's not actually in the Duck Park, he's in the classroom, but through the magic of Canva and Seesaw, we were able to um, make that happen. This picture here is, you talk about healthy foods, we were able to create a gift because that's another um, feature of Canva that you can create gifts. We had healthy foods. We gave him, we took a picture, made him look like he was holding a grocery cart and then put the grocery cart in there, adding some animated vegetables and um, fruit to the background. 
presentations, it doesn't always have to be movies. This was me showing, um, it was animal habitats, but we were just doing a presentation in this class. But to kind of um, add some razzle dazzle, I put myself in and uh, I put some clothing over. I made myself a scuba diver, gave myself some goggles and the kids were able to do that as well. We've done some national parks where they're park rangers. There's so many possibilities with these two tools. If you see up here in the, um, kind of like in the middle, I'm gonna go on to that to the next slide. I'm gonna show you more of that, but that's stop motion that you can do with Canva. If you notice as this is moving, the um, snowflakes are going up and the, and the snow globe is going back and forth. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But this was a first grade in the bottom right-hand corner. This is a first grade student. Again, report, they're talking about weather. They can talk about weather in their classroom through the magic of Canva. We put them in a um, TV studio. We can give them a desk. We can have them. You, there's so many things that you can add. Um, this girl did it on her own. She added snow. And this is animated. If you press and play, all the snow starts to fall. So you have that um, animated feature within. Save it to your camera roll and share it to Seesaw. This, because this might need some more explaining, and I have a five minute, I think it's, I have a video on this in our link tree, but stop motion, once you have that slide, you just duplicate and you group and you just move your slide, you can just move each glo snow globe a little bit here and there. If you see on the bottom here, you can see how I did that. I went to timing and each slide, instead of it being like five seconds, it's now 0 0.5 seconds. So you teach them a little bit about decimals here too. You apply <laughs> it to all pages and you get that, that GIF kind of look that goes back and forth where you then just download it as a transparent background. And I mean, there's a kid in a snow globe as a GIF. And then there's, again, so many things that you can do with that. But we had so much fun with this. I actually did this with Lynn's class and we did it in mm -hmm. December. So we had that Second grade. We had that October, pro or October project. We had a December project. And then May was our... Um, Habitat project. So we have, we tend to have a lot of fun. <laughs> we <do. laughs> We've given you a whole lot. So we want you to take some time right now and use the chat to think about, hopefully you're thinking about ways that you can use these two tools in your classroom. And that's one of the things we can't wait to see. You know, we have some ideas, but we know that you're, you're going to have plenty more ideas for us and we can all brainstorm together, but um, use that chat feature and, and tell us, how can you see using these two tools together in the future? Oh, I love the science idea. Science, oh, science curriculum. curriculum. Absolute science and social studies, <clears throat> excuse me, in my opinion, are like the gateway subjects for Canva and, and Seesaw. Yes, baby steps, starting slow. <laughs> Walk before you run. Yep. <laughs> I also oh, wanna, mm -hmm. steam. That was another one. When I get excited, I call it the tech shakes. They, this, these two tools <laughs> together give me the tech shake. So you do want to, and I do, we start small. We start baby steps is the way to do it because you won't do it any other way. But once you realize how easy it is, your ideas, like the light bulbs, literally, as we were doing it together, we'd be like, oh, what about this? We could do it for this. We could do it for that. But with any tool, you don't want to overuse it. But there's so many great opportunities to use these two tools together. And I love somebody put in the comment, um, students love tech. Yes, they do. And they become so involved and invested in their product. So sure, we can use tech for fun, like the, the Read Across America or 100th Day Photo Booth but you are teaching the skills in that fun activity to help them dive deeper into the more academic activities. So those are all, those are some of the baby steps, the fun steps that build the, uh, the, the tech skill foundation for the more academic based projects. Oh, somebody said they love the background remover tool. Oh. One button. Yes. One button. It's great. <laughs> Background remover for the win. Absolutely. How cute's the snow globe? I know. It's so we cute. also did the snow globe. I, I love the snow globe idea, but there was a third grade class that also did um 
they were stuck somewhere. Like some of them were in Disneyland and some of them were in a cabin. And instead of the snowflakes, they were like pillows. So if they were in a cabin, like they're stuck somewhere. And instead of using the snowflakes, they used different elements that went along with their writing prompt. So they had a writing prompt first. And through that writing prompt, they then had to visualize their snow globe through their writing prompt, which was really, really cool. All right. Somebody wrote, I can play with this all day. You can. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It is um, a bit of an addiction. It when is. You start thinking about, even in the primary grades, how you can smash these two powerhouses together. And I often tell the kids it's Google Slides with sparkles. And, <laughs> and you know, who doesn't love some sparkles every once in a while? And I mean, this on top of the tools that Seesaw has, it is just, I always, mm -hmm. like if I was stuck on an island, what two apps would I need? These are the two apps. That's mm -hmm. all I need. I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, but the engagement and the opportunities for authentic learning. And now with all the new Seesaw stuff that they have to offer, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's an exciting time in education. And um, it, we're just so excited to take this journey with you. Like we said, all of our resources, all the things we talked about, backgrounds, you know, how to create elements. We tried to create everything in there. Um, I believe I even added all the activities with the 100th day. So you have your basis that you can take that and copy it and make it your own to give you ideas on how to use this in the future. Um, and we wanted to create a one-stop shop for you mm -hmm. that you can use. I believe you put it in the resource, so it should be there. We'll also probably put that link in our social media today so that you'll have access there as well. But um, our goal is to give you all the things so that you can have, um, you know, everything that you need to start your school year. Yeah, I'm really sorry that most of you out there, unless you work at Warwick School District, I'm really sorry that you don't have Shelly, the tech coach, <laughs> at, your, at your side because she is fantastic. Oh, I can't you. emphasize enough how... Uh, what an amazing job she did in creating the link tree for our presentation. Oh, so you do get a little, a little bit of Shelly through the link <laughs> tree. Um, but we also have on this page the um, social media connections for both of us. Yes. I, I, one of the things I know how hard teachers work, and I try to make it so, first of all, I never show you tools that aren't worth it. These two tools are absolutely worth it. And I always try to promote things that make life easier. And, um, you know, as I share with my teachers, I'm more than happy I share on social media. So so give us a follow, because not only do we want you to see what we, we're going to do this year, we want to know what you're doing. We want to see oh, yes, how you've taken this and how, you know, you've created, use these two tools together as well, because that's going to give us ideas because, you know, sharing is caring. So <laughs> um, please, please follow us. We'll follow you back and um, see what we create this year with our students. Thank you so much. We're so excited. Um, we were so excited to share this with you. Mm -hmm. I hope we didn't go too fast. We had, like we said, all of those resources are there for you and we're here, but thank you so much for taking time out of your summer yes. to join us. And we hope this um, created some excitement and not overwhelming because it's not overwhelming once you take it piece by piece, but we're so grateful to be here and we're so grateful that you joined us. Thank you so, so much, Shelly and Lynn. I think everyone can safely say they learned something new. Um, even myself, I want to get on and <laughs> <laughs> uh, a background remover tool truly is a game changer. Yes. Um, and we definitely do have some questions from the audience. So I'm going to go through a few and then we can kind of rapid fire if you ladies. Okay, can. great. We we can We're do here. That. We're here. Okay. Um, Monica asked, do you start the project and share access with the students so they don't have to have their own account? Or do you allow students to create the project in their own accounts and then put them in Seesaw? So we have our own accounts through that single sign on with Google. We're a Google school, so they're able to access through their Google accounts, just like they can connect to Seesaw with Google. So, um, K-2 in our district is iPads, so we use the Canva app in order for them to create these. So they're, yeah, they're, they're creating all these within their own account. Awesome. Thank you. And um, Shauna asked, does it self-grade the accuracy of the, the sorting activities that you created? 
Yes. Yes. That's it does. Is so magical. Woo. Seesaw was a game changer when they added the assessment feature. So you can have students, for example, when I did the 2D and 3D sort, students did it and I was able, boom, to look at the results. I didn't have to do the pre assessment and then look at them after school and analyze what things look like and then decide how I was going to teach the next day. Boom. I was able to get that overall classroom result in real time. And then I was able to do a quick review, scroll down, look at the individual students and know which ones I wanted to pull into a smaller group for a refresher. And Seesaw rolled that out quietly last year. And I don't think people understand the impact mm -hmm. of that. And once yeah. you get it, it took me a little bit. And there is a video in the link tree. It's one of the top ones because we try to go in order of the presentation. But it goes through and it's a Seesaw video of how to create those assessments. And, um, you know, now with their new standard feature, connecting it to a standard, I'm one of my goals this year is to get it connected to their gradebook. So, bam, it just uploads to their gradebook and um, everything's by standard. So it's definitely worth looking into. And um, it's it's absolutely phenomenal. Seesaw mm -hmm. has completely blown my mind the last year. It, and the, continues. Oh, it oh. is just like just when you think like, OK, they gave you one. No, no, it's it's there's so many great features that can be used with canva or just standalone um, that are self-grading that that make life easier it's all about making mm. life easier and you're right we just we're we're like the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> oh, dang, you really are. um this is a great question so we have a few uh preschool educators that are asking if you ladies have any tips on using canva with um, some of our younger students i would definitely start small i would that present, that elements, I think of it as the stickers. You know, if you can create um, that background in even, they they actually, they know more than we think they know, right? So going to presentation and finding a background, maybe that would be in the small group part, as I would, I could see being in a small group and finding the background for whatever you're doing. Say you're doing animals and you're um, somewhere, maybe African safari, and you're helping them find the background. But then when they go to elements, um, there's, Canva is so great with um, like accessibility too. You can use speech to text and the kids there are some kids that picked on a, up on it quicker than I did. <laughs> you hit that, you know, microphone and you say lion and all the lions pop up. So um, it's definitely worth, it's something that I would maybe showcase together and show them and then do small group and then, you know, work them towards independence. But yeah, I would definitely try it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and Michelle is wondering, for primary students, do you still have them do the steps of the project, like adding pictures to the snow globe uh, themselves, or does the teacher do most of it? They did that all themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not like we said, here are the steps, go have at it. I would model up on my screen step by step, and then they would emulate those steps as I get yes. them. Yes. Yeah. So we, it's, it's an, I do, we do, you do kind of model mm -hmm. where we be showing it up on the screen and then they would do it. And then, and the then we step. would say, I always say commercial break lids down mm -hmm. or iPads, <laughs> apples down. So I always tell them we're like Netflix or we're like when you're watching on TV and then there's a video commercial, like we're the video commercial. So when the video commercial comes on, we need to stop what we're doing and they either do apples down or we close the lids and that's when we go back to the i do and the we do before the they do that makes sense and then there are so many ways to scaffold you get to a point where maybe all right now this phase is going to be better suited for small group so maybe you get your basic background background um done whole class and then maybe you have Shelly come back in and work with small groups over at a table. Um, and you can have them do it in real time with you within a small group. You know your students best. So back in the day, I was a first grade teacher. So always when I do technology, I, I kind of can gauge what kids can do what. And you know, Canva, I was like, yeah, definitely third grade. Then it was, yeah, definitely second grade. And then I try with first grade and it's amazing some of the teachers that were really able to grasp and do that without a Shelly 
we're able to, once the kids get used to using the tools, it makes it easier. So think about how you want to scaffold throughout the year. And maybe you're just even starting with a presentation background, pulling it into Seesaw and then having them use the draw tool. It doesn't have to be all about bells and whistles, but one of the great things about Canva is that it does have sparkles and it does have that animation that you can't get unless you, you know, combine it with Seesaw. So um, just small steps and getting them to learn one tool at a time, just like you do with Seesaw when you learn the different tools at the beginning of the year. Think of that with Canva as well. Thank you. Um, and speaking of small steps, Kristen uh, Mitchell is asking, I want to learn how to not get overwhelmed when using Canva. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you uh, refine a search to avoid going down the rabbit hole? So refining a search in, does she mean like, I, I would just focus on the presentation and the elements to start um, with what you're doing. And those two parts of Canva, like I, you know, there's that, that left-hand panel. I would just work on those two until you're confident with those two. And then you can start, cause you, I can get anyone, anyone can get into a rabbit hole. They have added, if you go to the apps, they have added so many, they add so many things on a daily basis. I don't even know what's there. Um, so I would just focus on the panel of what Canva starts you with and get familiar with those things and then gradually add as you feel. And it'll happen quicker than you think because I think it's so user-friendly, just like Seesaw. And I think, uh, agreed, the rabbit hole is um, a place I visit often. <laughs> um, with my kids, you set limits. Okay, you're gonna pick three right. animals to put in. Right. And you have five minutes to pick your animals or you have three minutes to pick your animals and put a visual timer on the board and, and remind them as it's counting down. Because otherwise we all yes. keep searching yes. for the perfect lion because there's so <laughs> many different lions from which to choose. Well, they're all perfect. So most right. of them are gonna right. be perfect. Right. So you set a timer or you set a quantity limit and um, try to control it in that manner. Because especially the young kids, they have limits, right? I mean, they melt even, you know, I, I see it as a tech coach when I come in, if you give them, if it's more than like 45 minutes and hour, an hour was pushing it, mm -hmm. but that was the end of the year, but they literally start to melt. And you know, when you need to just kind of cut it off and um, move on to the next thing. And, you know, so baby steps. And I like the way you talked about like chunking times, mm -hmm. giving them a time limit. For Lynn, Lynn is so organized. Those, you know, the structure that she had ahead of time, those graphic organizers were huge because when those kids went in to do their research, they already knew what they were looking for. And that's half the battle. And maybe think of that as you're trying out Canva. Think of that for you too. Okay, I know that there's thousands and I'm going to find more than I'm looking for, but I'm going to focus on this right now so that I can be, I can get accomplished when I need to get accomplished. Totally. And I think we will take one more question from the audience. Um, Monica is asking, how do you get the lesson from Canva to Seesaw and still have it be movable? So that's a great question. And that's going to be in the link tree. So when you go to download in Canva, I purposely, I didn't want to go into Canva in the presentation because I was afraid I was going to mess something up. But when you go to share in Canva, you can share as a PDF, you can share as a GIF, you can share as a JPEG, you can share as an MP4. So you're gonna to wanna to share as an MP4 and that's gonna keep all those animations in there. So what you're uploading is a short movie um, that they're then sharing with their families. Now, if you're talking about the movable elements, um, almost like your digital manipulatives, such as the shapes in the 2D and 3D shape, Shelly, did you save those as JPEGs? Yes, Each those individual... are shaved, saved Save. as JPEGs. And then, then you upload, upload them. And then those are the movable parts for your assessment. Um, there's a video in there. You just, it's easy. You, so what Canva will do is it'll it'll download a folder. So when then you go to upload a Seesaw, you just click, click, click. So for living, non-living things, even though I had all of them in my non-living bucket, I was just able to click, click, click all the non-living things that became part of the assessment. Wonderful. Trust the tutorial. It'll get you there. <laughs> Trust the tutorial. And if it's not clear, let me know and I'll make it clear. <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, thank you both again so much, uh, Shelly and Lynn. This was so engaging. I mean, the questions just still keep pouring in. I think, <laughs> um, I think that um, that was awesome that both of you shared your socials, uh, that everyone connect can connect with you after the presentation. Yes, yes please, please, do. please. I know that both of you will be more than happy to um, collaborate and answer any questions that educators might have. Um, for those of you that joined a little bit late, this session and all of the other Connect sessions will be available on demand August 4th. So you'll be able to go back and watch the presentation and download um, the link tree and all of the wonderful things that Shelly and Lynn have shared with us today. Um, but for now, I am going to roll some dice and give away some prizes. We're going to have two lucky winners. So let's. I hope everyone's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> we all went today. Oh. Here we go. Ooh. Dun, 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 dun. Yay. Congrats to Jessica and Stephanie. Yeah. Um, we'll be reaching out to you next week with more information on your prizes and how you can claim them. Um, for everyone else, thank you so, so much for joining and looking forward to seeing you at the rest of the sessions. Thanks again, Shelly and Lynn. Have thank you. Day. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.